Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me. I just finished my painting. Now what do I do? I have this freshly painted piece. It's probably still wet in a few areas. I've got this messy palette. My brushes are all a mess. I've got a mess everywhere. Well, thank goodness this is watercolor, because we can clean this up in about two minutes. The first thing I want to do when I finish a piece, and of course after I sign it, is make sure the piece is totally dry. Usually I do that with a hair dryer. Now, if I'm in the studio and I have plenty of time, I might go run some errands or work on the computer for a while, but the idea is to make sure the piece is completely dry before you try to remove the tape or the staples or the clips. The last thing in the world you want to do at this stage of the game is tear that piece or scar the paper. Now, when I paint, I tape mine down with a, either one inch or three quarter inch masking tape. To take the tape off, after the painting is completely dry, and I've got to stress that again, it has to be totally dry before you do this. Take the masking tape off so you can get the piece off your drawing table before you start cleaning up your mess. To do that, you want to grab the tape and pull it away from the painting. Always pull the tape away from the painting. I've seen people in workshops grab the tape and pull it like this, and if there's a little wet spot of paper, they'll tear their painting right in half, and I've seen it happen on numerous occasions. Always pull the tape away from the painting. Try to keep your fingers off the image as much as possible. Your skin does have oil on it. Then set the painting aside somewhere, preferably lay it flat. The paper might still be bowed a little bit from the wet application of paint, but if you lay the painting flat for a while, it'll generally flatten out. I'm gonna just hand that to the side here. Now I have all this mess to clean up. Do I take these to the sink? What do I do? Well, if you notice, I have two containers of water. One container is very, very dirty. I've been using that to wash my brushes out as I paint. The other one, however, is pretty clean. And of course, I have this toilet tissue blotter, which I use to control the water in my brush. To clean my brushes, take the dirty brush and just bang it. Bang it in the bottom of that dirty water, blot it out, bang it a few times in the clean water and blot it out. That brush is clean. I do the same thing with every brush I have. I don't really go to the sink and clean them. In fact, these brushes have been cleaned in a sink since the day I bought them. This is all that's necessary. This gets all the paint out of the brush and by blotting it and flattening it out, it's ready to do another painting. Whether I want to start painting today, or start painting tomorrow, or next week, it doesn't matter. The brush is clean, the bristles have been put back in their proper shape, just like you see on this piece. And I just set it aside. It doesn't matter if it dries or stays wet, it doesn't matter a bit. It's a real simple technique, but I see people a lot of times at workshop, and they'll spend 30 minutes with soap and water, cleaning their brushes, and this and that. It's not necessary to do all that, unless you just want to. I've been doing it like this for 30 years and it hasn't hurt a thing. So it's just, uh, I'm at the point right now in my life, if I can find a simple way to do it, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna teach others how to do it too. Let's make life as simple as we can. This palette has a lot of paint on it. Well, that's not bad paint. That will eventually dry in the palette and I can use that for another painting tomorrow or I can just clean the palette off and start out fresh tomorrow. Personally, I like to clean the palette. I like to start each piece out with fresh paint where I can go into my wells and have fresh colors mixed. Sometimes you get complementary colors working in here. I've got, for example, I've got some violet and some orange. Well, the violet has blue in it. Orange is a complement of blue. That's a, that's a potential for either a, a grayed down painting or possibly even mud if I just try to go in tomorrow and do another piece using those existing colors. Why don't I just clean the palette? I didn't, I'm not wasting a whole lot of paint here. I just take some Kleenex, wipe it up. It comes right out. Again, thank goodness this is watercolor. Take another Kleenex and wipe off any residue. It's as simple as that. I've got a nice clean palette to start painting tomorrow. Now another thing I like to do before I end the day of painting is take a wet Kleenex and go in and just kind of just clean up some of these colors. These colors are all dried in the well, so I have a nice hard color. And it's not a bad idea to spend about two or three minutes and just wipe off any uh, contamination that got inside these wells because a lot of times when we paint we go from the green to the brown to the orange to the yellow and the brushes get they just deposit this colors everywhere. If you have uh, freshly squeezed paint in your palette this can be a real problem because you just contaminate a whole well of color. If you squeeze out a whole tube of paint like I do and let it dry for a few days or a few weeks when you're ready to paint you just wet the top of it and you got fresh paint. If you do for example stick a dirty brush in it, just to give you an example I'm going to take this nasty green and stick it right in my yellow. 
If I squeeze out fresh paint, that yellow paint is all ruined now. It's all contaminated. <clears throat> As it is, instead I can just take a damp Kleenex and go in there and take it out. And after a couple of wipes of that, I've got nice, clean, fresh paint. This saves me a tremendous amount of paint over the period of a year, as opposed to having to scrape out that contaminated paint and squeeze more paint out. So it's all about finding an easy way to do it, saving a few bucks, and making the process simple. The last thing I do, once I've cleaned the brushes out and the palette, I always make it a point to clean the water containers out. Uh, clean them out. If you're going to paint the next day, go ahead and fill them full of fresh water. So when you come down tomorrow to paint, you've got a nice clean palette, you've got clean paint, you've got clean water. All you have to do is tape that piece of paper down and you're ready to, to go to town painting a picture. You haven't got to waste precious time or energy getting set up for it. You're ready. If you're not going to paint for a while, uh, empty these out and leave them unfilled. They will get kind of a, a, almost like a film on the bottom of them, which is a combination of just the, the, the chemicals in the water and the paint residue, which might be collected inside there. So from time to time, if I'm out of town doing a workshop, I'll let the ones at home remain empty so they can dry out. That kills any bacteria or any kind of a film that might be forming in it. The last thing I do, if I'm going to wait a few days before I paint again, is I cover up my palette. That keeps dust out of it, keeps insects out of it, keeps pets out of it. So when I'm ready to paint, I just pull the cover off, lay the cover down, put my water containers in the cover, my tissue blotter, I'm ready to go. I've got my dryer nearby, we're all set. I hope this helps you. Hopefully you have a dedicated place where you can leave this stuff all set out. It's much easier to do this. If you, if you can, just come down, just put a piece of paper down and start painting. Everything's set up and ready to go. Thank you very much. Be sure and check my website, sterlingedwards.com. There's a lot of workshops all around the country. I might be coming to one in your town. Thank you.